Greetings, friends. Almost a quarter of deaths worldwide are due to cardiovascular disorders. And in India, the absolute numbers are a whopping 5 million. And this breaches the rural-urban divide. Earlier, we thought it was a disease of the urban areas. Yes, the prevalence may be as high as 13% in the urban areas, but rural areas are not far behind at 7% or thereabouts. Similarly, it's a disease we thought always of the elderly age group. No, the seeds are sown when the child is in the mother's womb. Look at the nutritional uh, survey in the school-going age group. 56% of the children had some form of metabolic perturbations, which are likely to translate into cardiovascular disorders later in, on in life. And almost 25% of the burden of coronary artery disease occurs in productive age group of less than 40 years. Myocardial infarction occurs in Indians at an average age of 53 years, which is a decade earlier than the de developed world. So ladies and gentlemen, it behooves all of us to spare a thought as to why this cataclysmic rise of these disorders. And the answer is in the quality of food we eat. It's not the quantity. It's the processed and sugary food that we are eating. In fact, out of almost 7,000 edible plants, 50% of the global energy is coming from just three, wheat, rice, and maize. And wheat, especially processed wheat, is the biggest tragedy of humanity. It has been shown by the FAO data that in the second half of the last century, in the developing world, the use of refined sugars went up by 206%, while that of use of millets, sorghum, and pulses dropped by 30 to 45%. Just as when we were consuming around 15 grams per day of sugar in the beginning of the 20th century, this figure is 94 grams per day at the beginning of the 21st century. And what's the permissible limit? 25 to 37 grams for adults and 12 grams for children per day. It's been shown by both FSS AI data as well as a study by Holland Institute of Medical Sciences that almost 68 to 70 percent of all food and beverages are high in either saturated fats or sugar or salt. And this may be hidden, you may not know it. For example, sauce, bread, cereals, salad dressings, they may all contain hidden sugars. And some form of sugar is externally added to almost three-fourths of all foodstuff that we consume. And why is that? It is because this hedonic substance called sugar increased the palatability of the food, and therefore it has a commercial interest. Manufacturers want to increase the consumption. Number two, it reduces the cost. Protein and healthy foods are much more costlier than these sugary stuffs. And lastly, it is addictive. In fact, its effect on the brain is almost the same as that of heroin and cocaine. And that's why you end up with what we call binge eating or fog eating. And all this fructose that we put into the body, artificially generated, is damaging to the liver and creates fatty liver, which is a root cause of a lot of lifestyle disorders. So ladies and gentlemen, the need to decrease sugar intake is given. It would re reduce premature mortality. It will increase quality of life and it makes economic sense. It's been estimated that in USA, if they could reduce the sugar intake by 20%, it would bring an economic saving of almost 10 billion. And if it could be increased by 50% reduction of sugar intake, then the, the, the benefits could be to the extent of $31 billion. So the mood question here then is, how do we do it? Now, food is a personal choice. So one could argue that individual is free to make choices. 
But that doesn't happen. It does not happen with alcohol. It does not happen with cigarettes. If you just order a cola with the food stuff in a combo that we eat, it increases the sugar content by 10 times. And yet we order them. So personal regulation has not worked. So what we need is societal intervention. We need rules and regulations to tax and make these products totally unaffordable. Only then probably some sense will come of it. So ladies and gentlemen, for our own sake, for the sake of our family, and lastly for the country's sake, and for the humanity's sake, we need to curtail our intake of sugary and ultra processed foods. So wishing you a very healthy and safe eating festive season. Thank you very much.